Hello, it's me once again with another video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe down below. But anyway, recently I've been looking at a lot of greatest albums of all time lists, and I came to a really big realization. A, either I've never listened to the album, B, I've listened to songs here and there off the album, or C, it's been so damn long, I don't remember the album. So I thought, you know what, let's do something different. Because looking at my albums, reviews I've been doing, I noticed one thing I really wanted to do with them is shorten the time I spend talking about them. Now, if you guys have any ideas of ways I can do that or stuff you just don't want me talking about, be sure to comment down below. But I thought I'd do something just a little bit different, kind of mix it up. Now, the series I started, the discography reviews, Pretty much I'm going to leave them as is until I figure out what I want to do after that. I may go back and review some of them, which is something I've really considered doing. That's why you really haven't seen too many album reviews from me lately. That's pretty much the main reason why I've been trying to figure out ways just to shorten them down. Don't want them to be... I really don't want them to be any longer than maybe six minutes. This one's going to be longer because I went through all this stuff. But anyway, let's get into the first album I want to talk about, and it's going to be Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band by The Beatles. Now, this album I have listened to before, but I have not listened to this since I put it in my top 50 albums of all time list on a previous channel. So that was at least six, seven years ago. So that's the last time actually I've listened to Sgt. Pepper. Now, Sgt. Pepper was released May 26, 1967. It was really the brainchild of Paul McCartney and the band. After they quit touring in 66, they really needed, I think, going into the studio. McCartney's like, why don't we create like this Edwardian band, military band? And then they did this thing of... Well, after they recorded Sgt. Pepper, they're like, why not just do a whole album of it? So that's really how Sgt. Pepper became what it was. Now, Sgt. Pepper is a very important album because it really bridged pop music with the counterculture, avant-garde, early prog rock roots. And really, to me, legitimized it. There was so much going on with the counterculture pop music, that it was really truthfully inevitable that they would merge. Uh, it's one of the first concept albums. I know Freak Out was a concept album. I love that record by Frank Zappa. It's amazing to listen to. Uh, and like I said, it was really the first start of prog rock. Next door, Pink Floyd was recording Piper at the Gates of Dawn, which... You can listen to, and both bands, you can really hear that sound there. So I'm not sure if they kind of were like, okay, that's what they're doing off of both, and really led to somewhat of their sound. Now, the Beatles were Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, Ringo Starr. Uh, producer George Martin for this record. Now, the one thing you notice quite a bit in this record is how much tape effects, and new technology is on this record for the time. Loops, uh, melantromes, or whatever they're called, was used on this. And musically, this album was quite different from anything I expected the Beatles to really do. Now, the track listing is Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. It, it was a good song by McCartney. It was a good start-off song. It's short, sweet, it's to the point had a really great guitar lick in there that I really was like, ooh, that's not bad. Uh, song number two is With a Little Help From My Friends, sung by Ringo Starr. The one thing I'll say about this, Joe Cocker has the way better version of this song. That's one thing I notice is that Joe Cocker made his so iconic that this kind of feels, eh, it's like flat to me. Uh, song number three, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, sung by John Lennon. Decent song. It's pretty singable. It has its moments where I'm like, that is some fucked up lyrics, but it works for this. Uh, song number four is the first real misstep I find on the album, Getting Better. I didn't care for it. It was sung by McCartney and Lennon. 
Uh, next song, Fixing a Hole, McCartney. I didn't really mind it. It had its moments where I'm like, you know what, that's good. It still had that poppy singing. It's a little bit of this uh, thing I noticed throughout the album where it's like they're doing stuff and it's really hard on the ears. And this is coming from a guy that listens to Zap a lot. It's just, it felt a little overdone with it trying to do some of the stuff it was. On to the next song, She's Leaving Home, sung by McCartney and Lennon. Another decent, competent track. Really, I, I enjoy it whenever McCartney and Lennon are singing. Uh, next song on here, Being for the Benefit of Mr. Kite, sung by Lennon. I quite enjoy that song. Had its moments. Uh, on to the next song, Within You, Without You, by George Harrison and the Asian Music Circle. Now, George Harrison, in interviews, said, yeah, the reason I kind of left the Beatles was because I got one song, an album, and with all the songs I had written, it would have taken me a long time to get all the songs out. But listening to this, this is what I think is one of the worst, weaker tracks on the album. It really is. It. I like sitar music. I thought Norwegian Wood was a better song. This one, to me, just didn't do it. I just couldn't get into it. It's one of the weaker tracks on the album. On to the next song, When I'm 64, by Paul McCartney. Sung, uh, really, to me, the one thing that really came out of this is how much it reminds me of Big Bad Bill, is Sweet William Now, by Van Halen. Which is a popular 20s song, but it's a great song, Big Bad Bill. This one's competent. I really enjoyed this song. It's one of my favorites from the album. On to the next song, Lovely Rita, once again, very poppy. Like it. It's not over the top with the uh, effects and loops and everything. It sounds pretty good. On to the next song, Good Morning, Good Morning, sung by Lennon. Not bad. Not bad. It's not, I'd say, one of the better tracks on the album, but it's competent. It's not terrible. It's not unlistenable. Uh, Sergeant... Pepper's Only Heart Club Band reprise with Lennon McCartney and Harrison singing. Not bad. It's a great reintroduction. It just felt kind of weak because it really was only about a minute song. It kind of felt like filler. So it is what it is. And the final song, A Day in the Life. Great song. Great Beatles song. One of their best. Had Lennon and McCartney singing on it, and you could hear throughout the song is when they were changing, and it was telling a story. Now, this song got banned by the BBC due to some reference to drugs or something, which, back in the day, it happened. It really did happen. So, best songs off the album, When I'm 64, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and A Day in the Life are my three favorite from this album. Worst songs off the album, Getting Better, and Within With out you. And the only thing really I can say about getting better is why I didn't like that is how the guitar at the beginning, just that sort of staccato note, ding, 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 type stuff, it really, ear wise, I didn't care for it very much. Uh, hidden Gems off the album, I'll say definitely lovely read as a hidden gem off this album. And the first Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club band was quite good as well. Oh, and Worst Songs also, with a little help from my friends. It's not that it's a bad song. It's just Joe Cocker made his so good that when you compare the original to the cover, the cover actually blows it out of the water. Now, if I had to grade this album out of five, I'll give this album a solid four out of five. Do I think it's the greatest album of all time? No. Does it have its flaws? Yes. It really does have just flaws. I feel the effects were kind of overdone. Uh, some of the songs were very short. And it, it's kind of something interesting where they're short, but you want more. Like, it just has that feeling of just wanting more to it. But anyway, that's my thoughts and opinions on Sgt. Pepper's Only Heart Club Band. If you made it through the review, once again, be sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe. What do you think about Sgt. Pepper's Only Heart Club Band? This is me, you're signing out. Peace.